Hello and welcome to the Vibe with the Three and Five podcast. I'm Emily, and you may notice I'm missing my co-host. Unfortunately, Cam is not feeling well, so he's unable to record this episode, but I'm still going to cover um, mostly Syracuse basketball. So I'm going to cover the Syracuse versus Virginia game and then the Syracuse versus Virginia Tech game. So the main focus of this weekly episode will be Syracuse basketball. Towards the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about Syracuse football, but jumping into the game reviews of Syracuse basketball, we have their game played January 7th, last Saturday against Virginia. So the final score was 73 to 66. Syracuse unfortunately lost that game, but the player of the game was Judah Mintz. So Judah had 18 points, four rebounds, three assists, and he ended up playing 35 minutes. Another player who played really well that game was Joe Girard. Joe put up 19 points, he had three rebounds, two assists, and played a total of 28 minutes. Malik Brown, a freshman we saw play quite a bit that game and played pretty well. He had 10 points, eight rebounds, and he played 36 minutes, so that was a lot of playing time for Malik, but he really did well, so that's great to see. Some other player stats, we had Jesse Edwards with just four points that game, which was a little bit surprising because Jesse generally scores at least 10 points, usually having a double-double, but only four points in the game versus Virginia. He did have 10 rebounds though, three assists, and played a total of 26 minutes. So it seems like he was good defensively getting boards, but he did struggle scoring wise this game. Chris Bell, he had eight points and played 16 minutes. He did all right scoring wise. I mean, eight points really is not too bad, but seemed like, again, defensively, he kind of struggled, didn't really do much, didn't have any stats for rebounds or anything like that. Another freshman who played pretty well was Justin Taylor. We saw he scored seven points that game. He also had two rebounds, two assists, and played a total of 23 minutes. So some important notes from that game. Benny Williams was sick. Apparently he was throwing up before the game. So a similar situation happened in the Bryant game earlier this season. So we did not see Benny Williams start, which is really a big change for Syracuse because Benny has started all year long. So instead of starting Benny, John Bolajak was started. He only ended up playing four minutes though. Malik Brown really stepped up that game and played starter minutes. He played 36 minutes. So the entire game, except for the four minutes, starter John Bolajak was in. Coach Beheim said that he would have started Malik Brown that game, but since Malik is from Virginia and they were playing against Virginia, he didn't want to start him in his homecoming game. He didn't want that to get in his head, so he started John Bolajak again um, instead of Malik. So the Benny Williams situation, as mentioned above, this is the second time Benny has dealt with a sickness this year and hasn't been able to play. So it could, you know, be true that he is sick. Obviously, you know, he wasn't feeling well. But in our opinion, we think that maybe Benny gets nervous about the games and maybe, you know, it makes him nauseous, causes him to throw up or whatever the situation may be. But it seems like he ends up getting sick maybe because of nerves and... It's just really unfortunate because we rely on our starters to start. So when there's a change like that, it affects the whole team. So it's a little bit tricky to adjust from, but hopefully Benny starts feeling better. Um, not quite sure what's going on there, but obviously he was not able to play. So moving on to the Syracuse versus Virginia Tech game, that was a really good game for Syracuse. So they played that game on Wednesday, January 11th. Syracuse won. The final score was 82 to 72. Syracuse's record is now 11 and 6. So the player of the game that game was Joe Girard. Joe played very well that game. He had 24 points, one rebound, three assists, and played 38 minutes really great game for Joe. He played very well defensively, although he is significantly shorter than most of the other guys on the court, but that does not stop him from 
running across the floor to guard somebody who's open, you know, on the three-point line. So saw a really great effort from Joe defensively. So that was great to see. And it also seemed like his dribbling and ball movement was a little bit more precise and better than I've personally seen in the past. I mean, he really handled the ball well. And he kind of reminded me of Judah out there, you know, being point guard. So overall, great game for Joe. He really contributed tremendously in that game. Some other key players, Jesse Edwards, he had 13 points, nine rebounds, six assists, and played 35 minutes. So Jesse put up another good game. Judah Mintz also played great that game. He had 12 points, two rebounds, three assists, and he played 34 minutes. So I actually was fortunate enough to attend that game. And I noticed that Judah seemed to be passing the ball a lot more instead of just rim running because a lot of times Judah will get a hold of the ball and he kind of takes it upon himself to you know get a basket but it seemed like he was passing a lot more which was very smart of him in this game because he was being very heavily guarded by Virginia Tech so it would have been really difficult for him to shoot and probably he wouldn't have been able to make a lot of shots he might have taken because of Virginia Tech's defense. But Judah is a team player. He passed the ball just so someone on the team could score. And that's exactly what we need from Syracuse's players. Malik Brown had another really good game. He had 11 points, 12 rebounds, two assists, and he played 34 minutes. Another good game for Malik. He's really stepping up where other forwards like Benny and Chris Bell are kind of fouling. Like we said previously, Malik needs more minutes, and he's getting them. I mean, he played 34 minutes this game, 36 minutes the last game, so it's great to see that from Malik. This was his first career double-double, so congratulations. That's really a great accomplishment, and just keep up the work because Malik has really been helping the team in its past couple games, and... Can't wait to see how he contributes in the future. Justin Taylor, also another freshman who played very well. He had 10 points, two rebounds, and he played a total of 29 minutes. He is another freshman showing great potential. He made some really good three-pointers in the game, and it kind of reminded me of Buddy Beheim playing-wise, um, just the way he was making some threes and just kind of the way he plays. Also, his build is similar to Buddy. He's more physical on the inside, and we expect him to really step up in the future, and there's some really great potential there for Justin. Him, along with Malik and other freshmen, are showing really great potential, and they're very promising for them to develop and get even better for, you know, next year and the upcoming years after that. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing from a lot of Syracuse freshmen. As they get more playing time, they really prove themselves and show why they're out there playing. So keep that up. Samir Torrance, he had five points, one rebound, one assist, and played eight minutes. So for the short time he played, he got a lot done, and he really made some crucial shots in the first half. You know, we were trailing a little bit in the first half against Virginia Tech, but Saimir got in there and he got things done, got some points made, and that was great to see. Other player stats, Benny Williams. Benny only had one point this game, which was a free throw. He did get two rebounds, but only played eight minutes. So not a good game for Benny, unfortunately. And Coach Beheim said that Benny's previous illness did not affect his playing this game. He just had a bad game. So it seems like Benny is either not feeling good or if he's okay, he's not playing his best, which obviously sucks like that. He's a starter and he's a sophomore. So compared to a lot of other guys on this team, he is kind of more of a leader. And it just when he struggles to score and, you know, only gets one point in eight minutes, it's just too bad to see. But Chris Bell, he ended up getting six points this game, two rebounds, and played nine minutes. So even though Bell and Williams are starters, we see players like Justin Taylor and Malik Brown get much more playing time and more stats just on the board in general. But it was a great game for Syracuse, so I'm happy they won, you know, by double digits. Some other observations and important no notes from the game. 
Chris Bell was really playing a lot better defense and he seemed to be trying a lot harder out there, which is exactly what we need for him and is what coach asked for. He just wants him to try to get those rebounds. You know, you can see the effort from Chris and that was great. Keep playing like that, Chris, and you're going to get a lot better. As mentioned before, Malik Brown and Justin Taylor playing very well for only being freshmen. Peter Carey was seen that game walking on crutches. So Coach Beheim said in the post-game interview that he had a procedure done on his knee. Apparently last year, he actually had the same procedure done on his other knee. And the procedure helped Peter a lot last year. So they decided that it would be best to repeat it on his other knee. Coach confirmed our speculations of Peter Carey redshirting his freshman year. Now it will be a medical red shirt. So coach said that he will be registering for his freshman year, but it will be good for Peter because he'll get bigger and stronger for next year, which is what we need. So we're wishing Peter a speedy recovery and wish him the best for, you know, the rest of this year getting better and stronger. And we can't wait to see what Peter brings to the table next year. Coach was asked again about the starting lineup, which is talked about a lot. And he responded by saying, it doesn't matter who starts, it matters who's playing. You earn your minutes. If someone plays well, then they're gonna earn more minutes. That's the way it works. And that is true. We have seen that, you know, with Malik Brown playing good, he's getting more minutes than other starters. Same with Justin Taylor. And, you know, that makes sense to me because I've often wondered, you know, why doesn't coach change up the starting lineup? But like he said, you know, okay, you're a starter, but like that, if you only play eight, nine minutes, what do you do? Like that, you could come off the bench and have 34 minutes, 36 minutes. You know, he puts in people who show that they have what it takes and show that they're going to contribute. So that makes a lot of sense. So our next game is Saturday. So if you're viewing this video on uploads, they play today. It is against Notre Dame. The game is played at the Dome. So Notre Dame's record is 9-8, and eight, so we do have a better record than them. And they have ba Baldwinsville native J.J. Starling on their team. And Syracuse tried recruiting him heavily, but he, you know, decided to attend Notre Dame. So that will be a very interesting game with him playing at Syracuse being a Syracuse native, but hopefully Syracuse keeps up playing how they've been playing and we have another win against Notre Dame. So some good stuff happening in the Syracuse basketball world. Really, the last win was awesome. So again, we hope they can win against Notre Dame. Some Syracuse football news, just a little bit to cover. Deuce Chestnut has decided to transfer from Syracuse to LSU. We wish him the best of luck. We definitely will miss him, but things happen. And then this was a little bit surprising, but Nick Monroe, Syracuse's football's assistant coach, is leaving Syracuse after being with Syracuse for seven years. He's going to Minnesota. Um... Nick Monroe has been coaching with Dino Babers for a total of 10 years, and they have been coaching here at Syracuse for seven years. So it's interesting to see him leave Syracuse and also leave Dino since they've been coaching together for 10 years. So it's really unfortunate that Syracuse football has lost three coaches this year, the offensive, defensive, and the assistant coach. And they've also lost some key players. So it will really be interesting to see the football program and how the team adjusts the upcoming years. I know we do have a lot of great talent on the team, a lot of really good incoming players, but it will be a big adjustment with just so much new stuff, new coaches and stuff, but I can't wait to see what they have to bring to the table and obviously wish them the best of luck. So my show and tell this week, I have this Judah Mint poster I made. So as I said, I went to the Virginia Tech game and Judah is mine and Cam's favorite player. So we wanted to show our love and support to him. And I made this poster. It says, we heart Judah. 
And then number three on the bottom, since that's his number, and I'll try to show this, but here I have Relentless. So Judah, you know, if you look at his social media and like merch he has, some key words and phrases you often see from him are Relentless. Don't overthink it is a little catchphrase he has, and I really like that. It's, I like the meaning and the message behind it. Don't overthink it. It's just such a good little motto to have and keep in mind. And then lastly, have faith, which is so, so important. So again, this poster, I showed it to Judah because again, we just want to show our support for him and just show our appreciation. And he seemed to really like it. And then I had him sign the heart. You can see a little bit there. And I asked him to personalize it to make it a little bit extra special because we obviously hope Judah stays at Syracuse, but with his talent, it would not surprise me if he, you know, enters the NBA portal. You know, anything can happen, but we're so grateful Judah is here this year and he's really showing his talent. So again, we love you Judah and keep playing the way you've been playing and best of luck to you. So that will be the end of this week's episode. It was a little bit different without Cam, but we hope he gets better soon and can be with us next week. Thank you guys for watching as always, and we appreciate the support and make sure to comment with any content ideas, questions, suggestions, and follow our other social medias. Thank you guys for watching as always, and we're out.